You meet someone. You give them your number. Is 213. You're just joining a new contacts list, right? Actually, you could be exposing a trove of sensitive personal data. When phones were first introduced, people didn't even really know their own phone numbers. You would call an operator and ask to be connected with someone. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try again. Long gone are the days of a landline fixed to the wall. These are personal computers that we're carrying around with us all day in our pocket. You use your phone number to log into your bank account. You'll use it to access personal medical records, call a cab, tweet, send email, Google directions, find somebody, get in touch with someone, book a restaurant reservation. At any point in that whole um, system, you're exposing your phone number. The government has traditionally identified people by their social security number or home address, but the private sphere is increasingly likely to accept a unique cell number as a form of ID. As an identifier, it's very useful. Where we're having challenges these days in the security world is the uh, trend to also use a phone number as an authenticator. It's become common practice for companies to text a code to verify the identity of a customer. The idea behind that was, well, if I'm texting it to Jeremy's phone, I know Jeremy's in possession of it, and so he can enter that code in, and that's a great extra layer of security. But what if you're not the only one in possession of it? A lot of people think that their phones are secure because they have their phone. Some people don't really worry about cell phone security until they lose their phone. You can have your phone hacked while it's sitting in your pocket. Take SIM swapping, for example. A hacker could convince your provider to switch your SIM number into a device they own. So now it's possible to access your accounts and intercept two-factor authentication texts. In the time that it might take the individual who's been a victim uh, to you know, somehow get in touch with their mobile network operator and get things corrected, in some cases you might find that the person who's executing the SIM swap attack already had done some recon, gotten their bank password, and they're able to um, you know, do some nasty things. Think of somebody got unfettered access to your phone, how quickly you could lose control over your life. Anyone with a cell phone and a cell number is at risk. But there are ways to make your information more secure. One thing people should do is use an authenticator app. Don't rely on your phone number for two-factor authentication. One thing I like to do is set up a Google Voice account that redirects to my phone number. That way people don't have your direct access line. Another way to connect with people is just via social media. When you meet someone, you might want to just add them on LinkedIn. People should also be really mindful about the kind of information that they're putting out on the internet. The information security risks in today's world may seem overwhelming. The credit report company Equifax today revealed it was targeted by a major cyber attack. A hacker gained access to more than 100 million Capital One customers' accounts and credit card applications. Hundreds of millions of Facebook user records have been exposed. People feel this like futility where even if they try their best and try their hardest and do their little part, some big company can just leak all their data anyway. You don't ever worry about it until it happens to you. You know, there's an old saying, if a group of people are being chased by a bear in the woods, you don't have to outrun the bear. You just have to outrun the slowest person in the pack and you're probably going to be in, in good shape. But there could be other dangers lurking around the corner. Soon we're going to evolve past the phone number. We're using more biometric data to identify ourselves. We've seen a big rise in facial recognition. What's scary is that that's even more personal data that can be exposed. Thanks for watching The Idea File. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and watch more in our series.